So you released your first album in seven years, New Stage, in October. What was it like putting out the album after taking such a long break? Well, I didn't intend to take (laughs) this long of a break. I don't think anybody intended on a huge world, you know, pandemic happening, but um, it was nice. I mean, you know, I put a couple songs out back in 2018 and 2019 with the intent of just putting out these singles and kind of seeing how people felt about it and then, you know, touring a little bit. But when the singles came out and the tours were doing so well, it just kind of felt unfinished. And I, I, I came back and like there was a demand, like the fans were still there. They wanted to hear more music and it was really encouraging. So I think I used that as sort of the, uh, you know, that sort of came became the catalyst for finishing a full length album because I really had no intention of doing so um, until the, the response to Better With You and I think it was Wasted, you know, was so positive. It's nice. It was it was exciting, and and you know I'm 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 doing these colleges shows college shows now, which is why I have this gorgeous backdrop. Uh, <laughs> it's it's I'm at Penn State doing a bunch oh. of colleges, and they've been going really well, kind of gearing up for the big new stage tour and fleshing out a lot of the new songs and seeing how they go live. Nice, and I mean you mentioned that like the fans are basically a huge part of the reason why you completed this full album. How has fan reaction at these concerts that you've been doing? How has that just like made you feel of like, and does that encourage you to come out with even more albums in the future? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not like, I'm like so focused on just, uh, I mean, of course the fans are always encouraging and they are the reason I make music and the reason I've done it for so long um, because they keep coming back. But I think after this tour, I'll probably take a little time just for like, some personal stuff that I want to do in my personal time that I want, that I've always wanted to do uh, hobbies really mostly. And, and then also there's some like professional stuff that I haven't gotten a chance to do because I've been so consumed with music. Um, So I think, I think maybe after this tour, this might be it for a little while, at least. I mean, I I really do love, um, I don't think I've actually said that out loud until now. So yeah, I'm like, wait, this is like, get them while they're hot because it might be a minute. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it, it might be a while because I, I just feel like I put so much time and energy yeah. into this and I've been really doing so much touring in the last four or five years that um, I think this this kind of might top it off for a little bit. Um, so yeah. I'm making it bigger and better than ever. We're doing 34 cities around the United States and it'll probably be the longest US tour I've ever done just to make sure everybody can come. And, yeah. then, and then I might take some time for myself and to do other other projects. And also, I don't know, like, you know, I want to spend time with family and um, Mm -hmm. potentially make a family of my own. I mean, you know, I got married last year. And so that's something my wife and I still need to talk about. But, you know, we we've discussed it. And, um, you know, and then professionally, I I definitely want to do some more acting projects. I've got an opportunity where I could potentially be writing and producing uh, going forward. And that's something I've always wanted to do. So, um, yeah. I think the television space is something that I miss a lot. So, um, you know, there's just, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that I want to do both personally and professionally. And I think after this tour, I'll have time to do that. Nice. And I mean, you also mentioned that you got married. Congrats. Thank you. Um, How has, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but first, like how has like all these changes in your personal life kind of impacted how you've made your music? I mean, I think personal experience impacts songwriting in the best way, right? And that's another reason why coming off a tour, you need time, even if you do want to continue making music. Mm-hmm. I just feel like life needs to happen first so that you can write about it in a meaningful way and feel like uh, you're not rushing through it. Mm-hmm. Um, these last like eight or nine years, I think nine years now that I've been with Katie, have certainly been like, you know, very informative years and pivotal years in my personal life. And she's definitely become a muse for the project. And um, you can hear it threaded throughout the album. And uh, you kind of know where I stand in my relationship with Katie. And um, yeah, I mean, she's definitely affected my work for the better. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun being able to talk about that stuff, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think now it's just like about having more time to, to fill up, you know, refuel the tanks and 
think of more fun and create, build more memories so that yeah. there's more stuff to talk about in the future. Yeah. And is Katie going to be coming on tour with you? I think for part of it, she's, okay. uh, she's not a bus person. <laughs> she's not like crazy about That's tour fine. buses, which, you know, I get it. You know, she's, it. she's a, a, she can be a, she can be a girl's girl where she like needs all of her bathroom space. Yeah, and it's like that. you know, there's a couple. There's it's myself, and then two of my band members, and it kind of becomes like a you know a boys' bus, and like yeah. she's like, all right, I'll do a week, and then I need to take a break. But she and my dog Bailey are gonna come out. I think oh, a couple cute. weeks in, and then like she'll come, she'll come and go, kind of thing. Okay, nice. And okay, so let's talk about the tour. So, what are you most excited about for this tour? Like the number one thing. Yeah, I mean, playing the, the new music is just, yeah. it's every artist's dream, right? To get every song up on its feet and see how they perform live. And sometimes the most like unassuming song or the song that you least expect is the song that performs the best in live performance or live settings and vice versa. You know, some yeah. songs you're like, this is gonna rock, kind of fall flat. So as an artist, your job is to sort of tailor those songs so that they don't ever fall flat, that it's kind of like they all kind of have a big moment on stage. So arranging those songs and then rearranging old songs to make them sound fresh is always a fun yeah. thing. So I really enjoy producing a show from top to bottom. And, you know, I'm very good at giving the fans what they want. As, an, as, an, as somebody who goes and consumes music or goes and sees live shows, I, it makes me nuts when the artist doesn't play all the songs that got them there in the first place. And um, it's, it's a big thing to play the old songs that, that got yeah. you there in the first place and, and uh, give the fans what they want. So it's a nice collection of old music, new music okay. and everything in between. And I like to do a lot of crowd work, right? Where I, yeah. I pick on a few people in the audience and just chat, chat them up and try to get something going. And yeah. sometimes it's, it can be a really fun thing. And it makes the show very intimate and um, specific to whatever that city is. Yeah. What new song have you, is like your favorite performing so far that you've kind of like, whether it's like you got the biggest fan reaction, you just like really enjoy playing it. Of the new songs? Yeah, the new songs. Um, I'm really loving the way Lemonade sounds. It's, it's okay. the last song on the album and it's such a, um, it's just a feel good song. It's just, I, I really love the lyrics to that song. I'm really proud of that lyrically and it just has this undeniable make you feel good vibe to it. Nice. And uh, and it's sounding really good acoustic. Like I, I've been playing it on stage just acoustically with no drums or any other stuff. And it really holds up. Nice. And people who don't know the song, like I'm learning when I play it live, like tonight, for instance, I'm playing it at Penn State. And um, if they don't know it, Generally, a lot of times when people don't know a song, that's when they start to talk or they'll go grab a drink or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But in this case, after the first chorus, you can feel them connect to it and start to really kind of listen, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I love, I love playing that one. Nice. And I have to ask you about Beautiful Soul. So that song, what does that song mean to you now? Well, it, it's funny because I've, I've had, I've gone through different emotions with that song over the years right yeah. it's kind of like I'm in the third phase and I'll start I'll start with how the first phase went right yeah. so the first phase for me with beautiful soul was like oh my god this is happening I'm 16 the song is internationally known I'm singing everywhere in every country this is incredible right and then cut to like 10 years later second phase is like I kind of hate singing this song. I've yeah. been singing this song thousands and thousands of times. Uh, when can I stop singing this song? And then now I'm in this like third phase of just like total appreciation and nostalgia yeah. for it. Cause it's the song that allows me and has, has allowed me to have this like enduring and you know, this long career. And it's, I don't know how long it's been now, almost 20 years, it'll be 20 years, I guess. in like, wow. it's been like 17 or 18 years. And, and now what's cool is that it's sort of crossed over generations where mm -hmm. the 15 and 14 year olds that I played that for are now like in their early thirties, yeah. but yet I'm at colleges playing for 18 year old kids who were maybe two or three, you know, maybe not even yeah. born and they know the song. So it's kind of like, it's crossed over, like it's, it stood the test of time. Yeah. And that's even cooler, I think, than having any hit song, you know, is can you, can you make it last? 
So anyway, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> okay, a full circle moment is what right. it's like. <laughs> and I mean, you skyrocketed to fame in the mid to late 2000s. Like, what do you remember most about being so famous when you were like 16? It was complicated. I mean, it was, it was amazing, but it wasn't all amazing. You know, I was like yeah. kind of learning a lot about myself. You know, I was still a kid and people forget, you know, you're still dealing with like, acne and like you know starts like dumb things you know that you're insecure about and meanwhile you have to deal with it on this grand scale and so I I remember being totally just on this uh, the cloud nine but then also having moments where it was like do I want do I want all this like after a year of it it does get super intense and uh you're kind of you're kind of like wait I I'm uh, I'm in my pajamas at the airport and I forgot that like people show up with their cameras to the airport and then that makes you kind of feel insecure and small and like so I had to learn that and what that's like on a you know on a public level and so I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about um, just the way society works you know and like yeah. not to get too heavy but like yeah. what people, you know, how people react and act to certain things. And it was definitely, I grew up pretty quickly for sure. Yeah. But ultimately it was the best experience. It was worth trading in every high school dance for this career. Uh, cause, cause it really has just been my, like my favorite thing in life to do is perform live yeah. and get on stage and I'm a performer. So yeah. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I look back and there's always going to be moments that was like, Ooh, that was a tough time with yeah. family or friends or social, you know, things that I missed out socially, but overall it's like, how could you ever want anything more? Like, how could you ever, yeah. this is what I dreamed about as a, like seventh grader singing with a comb in the mirror, you know, and then it happened. So overall nothing, you know, super grateful. Yeah. And what advice would you give to any young kid, 16 year old or kind of skyrocketing to fame right now, like an Olivia Rodrigo, for instance, or a Billie Eilish? Yeah. I mean, two people I love very much. I love their voices. Um, I think for them and for anybody coming up, I'd say, especially like the TikTok world or anybody on social media that maybe has a strong following, but maybe doesn't necessarily know what it is they want to do quite yet. Mm -hmm um pick something like pick something that you really want to be good at because what I've noticed with social media is that it comes and goes even more so than uh being a young singer or you know I think that the the, the you know the the table turns really quickly even more so in this generation with social media than it ever has before so pick something that you know you can apply yourself to and get good at because when the next TikToker comes and they've moved on and you start losing followers like that shouldn't break you because mm -hmm. you have something incredible to offer the world yeah. outside of just you know a TikTok trend. TikTok trends are awesome and they're fun and I enjoy doing them too but like if I didn't have music and writing and something that I knew was was really tangible I don't know how I do in this generation with just clicks and likes. Yeah. And the other thing I'd say is keep people around you that will always tell you no and will be honest with you. Because if you don't, you'll live in this bubble of people who are just constantly yesing you. And it can be really damaging because one day you're gonna wake up and someone, someone will tell you no, like the law or like, you know, uh, uh, so an authority figure and you won't know what to do with that. So it's, it's, um, it's important to keep a good team around you too. Yeah, that's great advice for anyone, really. And I mean, kind of going back to the throwbacks, I feel like boy bands are coming back and you were in Dream Street. What do you think about this like boy bands resurgence? Are you for it? Like, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I feel like boy bands never really left. I mean, they, you know, from the time I was a kid, boy bands were around. And then when I was in a boy band, they were around. And then there was like, you know, One Direction and oh, now yeah. there and now there's BTS and all of the K-pop groups. I just feel like it's never really left Are there. I mean, maybe there's a resurgence of older boy bands, perhaps. But yeah. um, look, I uh, I think as long as there are teenage girls and boys, uh, there will always be 
boy bands, right? I think as long as there's hormonal teenagers, there will always be (laughs) boy bands. Yep. And before we wrap up, I want to talk to you about your marriage and how is like, you're kind of still a newlywed because you got married in October, right? So how has everything been like, what has been the most exciting part about married life? I know it's crazy. Actually, I think today or in two days, it'll be, it'll mark six months. Oh, it's, well, been, um, it's been incredible. I mean, honestly, it's kind of been exactly the same. Like we got, <laughs> like, it, it was, it was a dream wedding. I mean, it was like the most fairy tale wedding you could have ever asked for. And we got married in Carmel in like the redwoods. These trees oh, were six, seven, 800 years old. Like the trunks were, you could, you could hold hands with 30 people around a trunk of a tree. It was, it looked like Jurassic Park. Like it was just this uh, magnificent fairy tale wedding. Um, But then it was like over (laughs) and like everybody had to go home and it was still kind of a pandemic afterwards. Omicron was like just setting in. So we literally, we came, we were on this like super high and then came home and we sat around and like watched Netflix for three days and we're like, it's over it's kind of the same being married right I mean in the best way possible right but yeah. it's great it's amazing she's incredible we can't wait to travel and we haven't really gotten a chance to do that because I was supposed to tour after the wedding and it got canceled so we haven't really taken a honeymoon yet we haven't been able to like really enjoy the you know being married as a couple because yeah. of work and because of touring schedules but hopefully by the end of the year we're thinking of maybe doing a trip together for a few weeks and just kind of okay. get away yeah. And then hopefully a family one day, maybe hopefully down the line. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're definitely talking about it. It's uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's been a time, it's, it's a timing thing and yeah. we gotta, we gotta figure out when the best time is, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think maybe in the future. 